Welcome to our HBA Boston Chapter Mentoring Program Mentor Training. This module is recorded for you in order to provide an easy access to the most important guidelines about the program that you will be part of this year. Welcome and we hope you will enjoy it and find it helpful. The inspiration uh, for this online component of mentor training is to offload basic but important information and best practices regarding the successful implementation of the HBA Boston Mentoring Program. HBA Mentoring was developed and launched in Boston Chapter in 2006, and we have distilled many of our observations, experiences, and program elements into important core concepts which we want to share with you here. You will hear voices of three members of the Mentoring Committee. They will be acknowledged at the end. You can revisit this presentation as many times as you like. The second part of mentor training will take place at the mentors training breakfast at the beginning of March, where the, aim, the aims are for you to meet your co-mentor and your connector, meet other mentors who are part of this program, discuss potential challenges that you may encounter while participating in the program and how to handle them. This presentation has 10 slides with a recorded voiceover emphasizing the most important guidelines of the program. Please listen carefully to all of them, even if the content is familiar to you. The program has evolved over the years and this is reflected in this presentation. You will need to acknowledge completion of this training at the end of the presentation. Welcome to the HBA Mentoring Program. Without mentors, this program would not be offered. We are delighted to have you as a part of HBA Initiative. Welcome to the biggest HBA mentoring program in the country. Thank you for your time, dedication, and hard work because of your key contribution, we can offer this wonderful, wonderful developmental opportunity. The HBA Boston Chapter Mentoring Program is based on the four principles presented here. We will go over the principles from the mentee point of view during the orientation and a kickoff event. As a mentoring committee, we put in a lot of work and effort to run this program as smoothly as possible, allowing you and your mentees to be successful and achieve set goals. But our help will not be enough. Your role is absolutely critical in this process. Please reflect on the content of this presentation and take each principle seriously by following those helpful guidelines. We hope that you will find them helpful, revealing and applicable. There are four more imp four important principles about this program. First, this program is provided by the HBA Boston Chapter to help our members who become mentees in achieving professional goals that they set for themselves. Second, this is a group mentoring. It means that you will have four to five mentees in your group, also known as a circle. We have plenty of support, tools, and resources to help you to work in this setting. The third principle, this program is about development. It's not a support group or a book club or a career transition group. The goal for this program is to support our mentees in working towards and successfully achieving their personal or professional goal. In order to do that, we introduce to you our fourth principle, execution. We hope that each mentee and mentor, if you choose to, will set a professional developmental goal at the beginning of the program and will work over the next seven months on its execution. Principle one, it's all about mentees. The program is geared towards the mentee, although does not mean that the mentors are not encouraged to set their own developmental goal while in the program. Your role as a mentor is critical in setting this developmental atmosphere and making it successful. Positive attitude is absolutely required. Mentors set the tone and energy for meetings. 
please leave your stress and worries behind. The program is about looking forward and working on mentees' skills, abilities, and knowledge to be better professional, subject matter experts, and employees. We can't stress enough about being there for your mentees. Please make sure you, you guard your schedule in order to have time to meet with your circle and not rush through meetings. Set a good example, be motivating and supportive. Your active listening skills will be tested throughout the program. Paying attention to mentees will require your full involvement. You will need to provide feedback or your own take on different situation, topics or events by asking insightful questions and being neutral, not judging. It is very important to listen to be engaged with your mentees. This program is about sharing knowledge. This is not a place to tell mentees what to do, but rather to encourage them to find their own way in learnings. Providing real life examples should help you stay away from directing mentees in their actions. Please be careful not to dom dominate the discussion. Guiding the discussion will require you to encourage everyone to speak and share the floor. Lead your mentees through a thinking journey in order to find the best possible options for themselves. Ask questions, suggest alternative viewpoints or approaches, help them to clarify their intentions and goals, and come up with the new ideas. Finally, the idea is that the mentees will drive the meetings eventually, but in the early session, the commenters may need to guide the group along. Set an example, for instance, with a prepared topic, an exercise, or guided, dis or guided discussion. Providing structure of some sort until the mentees figure out how to step up with meaningful topics on their own choosing. The second principle is all about the circle. Let's talk about the program structure. The core of HBA program is a mentoring group or circle that consists of four or five mentees and two co-mentors. Because group mentoring involves several participants, it promotes diversity of thinking, practice, and understanding by including members from diverse companies, backgrounds, and functional roles. Mentors and mentees have the advantage of working with and learning from individuals with varied experiences, skill sets, and outlooks. What sets group mentoring apart is that a mentee in this environment also has a host of peer mentors to leverage as resources in addition to their mentors. Each circle is facilitated by two mentors and providing a strong positive experience for all group members depends in part upon how well you align and partner with your co-mentor. Although it's ideal that both mentors will attend every meeting, one co-mentor can run the group if there is a last-minute schedule conflict. Do not allow scheduled conflicts to rule, however. Please prioritize your commitment to the program. There are several keys to successful co-mentoring partnerships. We ask you uh, that you communicate with each other frequently and honestly, consistently prepare for meetings, discuss and coordinate ahead. This may be brief, it may require some discussion, and it probably should include a debrief after a meeting session. Invest time and be committed. Achieve balance of power. Consider who leads, who follows, and when. Know how and when to disagree in front of mentees. Recognize each other as a resource and appreciate each other's complementary styles, knowledge, and experiences. Be respectful and supportive of each other and become a mentor team. To make sure that the program is successful and runs smoothly, 
we have a mentoring program committee of about 25 volunteers led by the HBA Boston Mentoring Program Director. We tirelessly recruit mentors and mentees, interview and match participants, plan and organize events, prepare marketing materials, and engage with circles by regular communications, maintaining valuable resources, evaluating the program, and approving it based on feedback. We also have a group of connectors that are an essential part of the program. Connectors serve as liaisons between circles and the mentoring program committee, and we will cover their role and contributions in more detail below. Let's talk about confidentiality. A successful mentor-mentee partnership is based on trust, honesty, and confidentiality. For a strong mentoring relationship to develop, the mentors and mentees must feel that discussions of private issues or problems are being handled with discretion and that Circle is a safe and friendly environment in which to explore and share personal challenges. For that reason, Circles usually don't have participants from the same organization, and if they do, the committee checks that they are in distant departments or functional roles and preferably don't know each other. If situations develop within the circle that the group is not able to resolve, the issue needs to be brought up through the connector to the committee leadership to be addressed. If the mentees or mentors may initiate this within the group connector. We have resources and suggestions on how many obstacles can be resolved in a confidential manner. As a mentor, it also means that you need to know how to keep confidences. Issues can be brought up for discussion in a generalized way that is inclusive of everyone without targeting or calling out a vulnerable individual. Please contact your connector and have a conversation explaining the issue sooner rather than later. It's important to mitigate the issues uh, as soon as possible. You are not alone in this journey. We have many resources to support you to support you mentoring and make it exciting, impactful, and fulfilling. We organize several events to provide additional training, share best practices, discuss challenges, celebrate achievements, and learn from each other. During the program, there will be a mentor breakfast, evening orientation and kickoff, a mid-year event, and mentor-only gatherings. We have created and frequently update an extensive toolkit and resource library with selected articles and references on many topics, templates for different activities, and suggestions on discussion themes. Optional tools include templates for goal-setting aids, such as forced choice analysis, individual development plans, journals for taking progress, tracking progress, and links to personal assessments. We have collected and implemented best practices and lessons learned from more than 10 years of running this program. We will provide you with HBA's leadership competency framework that many participants have found extremely useful in setting their goals for personal and professional growth. It is also located on the HBA website. Let's talk about the role of the connector. Connectors are usually in charge of one or two groups and support them throughout the program. 
they meet uh, and get to know circle members at the kickoff event and or first independent meeting so that group members feel comfortable with her as a person and understand the role. Both mentors and mentees may contact their connector with requests or feedback. A connector checks in regularly with her circle, serves as a resource for topic ideas, and provides requested materials. In addition, a connector listens for issues arising may suggest a solution, and is able to contact committee leadership for more assistance if needed. This approach helps to maintain the confidentiality of conversations and quickly address challenges. A connector also reaches out to all circle members and plays a key role in collecting individual feedback for the committee a few months in and at the end of the year. Your feedback is carefully reviewed, analyzed, and is hugely important to ensure the current and future success of the program. The third principle, it's all about development. This principle applies to both mentors and mentees. Mentors, it's about your development as well. Career development means you, whether you the mentor or your mentees, are future focused. And to be future focused, one needs to do a good amount of self-reflection. Time needs to be consciously devoted to this, perhaps over many periods of personal reflection. Evaluate. Where are you now? What do you like, really like or enjoy about who you are or what you are doing? What is rubbing you the wrong way? What, if anything, is making you unhappy or feeling unsettled or anxious? What do you want to improve? What are you getting ready for? What are your ideals for a satisfying future? And what are you imagining for yourself? For the mentors, what legacy would you like to leave? Having some of those ideas in mind, one needs to evaluate your skills, abilities, and knowledge for the next chapter of your professional life. What skills, abilities, and knowledge do you have now that fit with this next chapter of your career aspirations? What might be missing? Write it down. This mentoring circle can help you brainstorm and fill in the holes of how you may be able to attain the missing pieces in your personal or professional profile. You need it thought out for your own clarity and to be able to express it to others. It helps a great deal to have other people know of what you are thinking and what direction you want to go. Nuggets of information deposited in others' minds can trigger ideas for connections at unexpected moments in an organic way that is not forced. Then create a plan. What steps can you take now and what steps do you need help with? We hope that this plan will be discussed during the circles meetings. Are your needs around knowledge? Do you need to increase or refresh your professional knowledge? Is there a workshop, a class, or a professional society that will suffice to provide it? Do you need to do an informational interview with someone who is a highly regarded subject matter expert in this topic? Not everyone needs to go after another advanced degree. There might be other options to refresh or increase your knowledge. And are you exploring or chomping at the bit? The key, ultimately, is deciding to do something about it. Participation in this program is certainly a positive step, but it is no guarantee, and it requires work. In sum, own your own career path or path. Make your career intentional. Plan your development to meet your needs. Be your own driver. Contrary to common belief, especially among less experienced workers, your manager is not going to be looking out for you. Speaking of your manager not doing it for you, how many times have you as an employee been asked to write your own performance objectives or developmental goals? Be sure to make whatever objectives you choose be results-oriented with measurable impact for yourself. Whether large or small, it should be measurable so that in the future you can cite your progress. 
a successful outcome to this developmental process is that you have identified a change to work on, the goal, and have achieved some measure of change. Setting goals is next up. The fourth principle is all about the execution on the goal. As mentioned, we are aiming that each mentee will have a developmental goal set for the program. We encourage the goal to be simple. This means that it needs to be specific, important, and measurable. If the goal is meaningful for the mentee, it will help greatly with staying on track in the execution. Another familiar version is SMART goals. Specific, measurable, action-oriented, reasonable, time-defined, simple is a bit easier to remember and equal its, in its purpose. Hopefully mentees will come up with an action plan that will describe steps that they will take in order to reach those set goals or goal. If not fully delineated or not specific enough, the group may collectively help the mentee to focus on the plan into a small, actionable, concrete steps with a timeline. We see circle meetings as a place where mentees talk about their action ideas and what they have done in between the mentoring meetings to work towards the goal. Updating about the progress will create accountability, a hallmark of this group mentoring program, and strengthen the execution. If no action have been taken between the meetings, it is the mentor's and circle's role to encourage and motivate the mentee to move forward, or help her if she feels stuck or confused. Brainstorm with her, identify alternative perspectives, create additional suggestions, and remind mentees to be open to new ideas and options. Growth and skills, abilities, or knowledge requires hard work and dedication. Our program and you as mentors can help with that. Your circle can provide, provide a safe space for self-reflection and encouragement in moving forward. Moments of silence can be awkward. But please, as the world is filled with words, allow some time for silence to reflect. Also, remember that introverts especially often appreciate a moment or two to think. If used appropriately, silence, these moments can depend, depend the reflection on the action, actions and outcomes. Our program is designed based on in-person meetings. This is proven to provide the strongest opportunities for building relationships. Virtual meetings on the phone or using tools like WebEx, Skype, or GoToMeeting can augment in-person group meetings or individual mentee conversations and has been useful for instances when someone is called out of town suddenly. A very success successful use for virtual meetings is in between regular monthly face-to-face -face meetings, for, in for instance, at the second week mark. Calls can be helpful to keep the momentum going if everyone is on board with the idea. Please remember to communicate between meetings. One person could be circle communicator or rotate the role among the group members. This person will be responsible for reminders, logistics, where will you meet, for example, meeting minutes, if needed, or keeping track of topics. Another idea is to assign, or ask for volunteers for, roles of timekeeper, or, time, or keeper of promises, or journal keeper, to track month-to-month -month action plans. A timekeeper is important if you have a mentee, or even a couple of mentees, in the circle who are vocal, and tend to talk a lot. Please pre-plan and work with your co-mentor. Meet with your co-mentor before the program if possible and have a phone or in-person check-ins during the course of the program. Your relationship with your co-mentor is important and we want you to work as seamlessly as possible. Brainstorm or plan approaches. Stimulate each other idea with ideas on how to handle a situation, a person, or a topic. Bring a diversity of viewpoints, but don't undercut each other. 
Over the years, we have heard that scheduling all meeting dates at the orientation or during the first mentoring meeting is best. With that, the group has set a schedule and is driving execution with dates in mind. It helps with planning travel, travel schedules as well. Set backup dates for your mentoring that can be easily canceled if not needed, but they are remarkably useful. Please make sure you and your mentees put all the dates in your calendars and then prioritize them while scheduling other meetings. Remember to allow yourself adequate travel time to reach your circle meeting on time. It is recommended to set topics or structure for the meetings at least one meeting ahead so that everybody can be prepared and know what is expected of them. Come to consensus of topics that fulfill mentees' needs and be flexible with the topics that are that as needed um, for the as need evolve over the time. If you set facilitators for the meeting's topic, another approach is to pair up mentees who will facilitate in various combinations, allowing increased opportunities to get to know one another and work together. If you plan on sharing materials, remind them to do so at least two weeks ahead of the next meeting. And of course, Please dedicate five to ten minutes at the end of each session for a round robin. What worked well for you? What did not? What can be done better next time? If you implement changes based on the feedback, we believe that you will have a successful circle and fruitful mentoring program. We hope you found this training helpful. We believe that these four principles are critical guidelines for leading an HBA Boston Chapter Mentoring Program and Circle. If there is anything else that we should be doing to help you to be successful mentor, please let us know. As we would like to improve this training, we will ask you to fill out a short feedback survey after part two training after Mentors Breakfast. We take your feedback very seriously and act upon it, so please provide your comments and suggestions for improvements. The link will be provided to you in the email after the Part 2 training. Please contact um, us at bostonmentoring at hba.net.org if you have comments or additional feedback. And of course, please make sure you sign off your participation in this training. Thank you, and we are looking forward to seeing you at the Mentors Breakfast in early March. This presentation has been prepared by, for you by three committee members. Alicia Yanushevich, Katya Mantrava, and, and Brenda Fung. Thank you so much.